Hey guys, guess what we're making today? We are making escovish fish. Escovish fish, and man. What, and what else, Joe? Huh? And what else? <laughs> Bungo peas and rice. And Pi so, pigeon peas. Yeah, pretty much. So we are get. We're at the edge of the garage because I'm frying the fish out here because it's better to fry it outside than inside. Get we the have smell tools. Out. Yes. And you know what? It's threatening to rain. That's why it we're is. not further outside. I give you a nice view for <laughs> one threatening the rain. Yes. So we'll be right back. You guys, look. My pepper. Oh, oh wait. There's two one. on this is one. That right? one green yep. on that side. No, that one. No, ready. that's one's ready, and that one too. Let me go look at the other pepper tree. Oh boy. Yeah, they come right. This one look came right at off. this. Lord, my family have some scotch bonnets. Lord. So these that. are the uh, brains? Yellow scotch bonnet, brain scotch bonnet. Oh, man. All right, guys. These are the babies that we are making today for the Escovish fish. I'm Beeline drying. snapper. We're, we're, um, I'm drying them because I'm going to cut them in half. Normally I cook them whole, but these are pretty good size um, fish. So I'm going to cut them in half um, so they could be ready for later. And you want to make sure your fish is dry. I like it dry to the bone. So when I drop it in that hot oil, I'm going to fry it in later. It actually doesn't splash all over the place and burn me. It will still splash, but at least it won't have that water um, on it to make it, you know, worse. So... I'm gonna slice these fishes in half. So there it is, folks. The fishes are halves, cut in half, or close enough. <laughs> and I put little slits in there, and I'll show you why later when I'm ready to cook it, okay? I'm also going to wash the fish again with some lime, you know, to kill some of the rawness, so you can do that. That way um, it kills some of that rawness that you may smell because I'm not just I'm not ready just yet to cook it okay so I'm gonna go ahead and wash it with some spring water and lime and then I'm gonna dry it real nice again and store it for cooking later so see you soon so here we are with the vegetables that go in the sauce for the escovish fish now that's the pepper, scotch bonnet pepper from our garden that we were able to harvest yesterday. We have a, get a few, yay. Let me tell you, that smells so good. Oh my goodness. I, I'm sure it's gonna be really hot. I'll let you guys know for sure. <laughs> so I'm also making gungo rice and peas and a lot of you call that pigeon peas. I soaked my peas earlier today from sometime after 10. I washed my peas. And then I fill it up with water and um, garlic, like just a um, one garlic and I crush it and put it in, bring it to a boil and then I put it to soak. You can do this, you know, even just a few hours before you start cooking if you want to. It just makes it cook quicker. So now it's after four and I'm getting my peas to start going to cook so I can get everything ready at the same time. Okay guys, so here we are. Um, I turned the peas off because I'm also not ready to make the rice yet. So you're gonna check your peas, right? You gotta make sure it's at least this soft. See how that, that just, I'm gonna eat that one, but see how that just, you know, opened up like that? Soft and yummy. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and add the coconut milk to the rice. Now this is one cup of coconut milk. Today I'm using the canned milk, okay? Um, because I just didn't want to grate, didn't feel like grating any coconut and making the coconut milk. And this is unsweetened milk, just so you know, okay? And I'm just gonna let that blend a little bit together and come back and add the rest of this, the stuff like the rice and the scallion and all that good stuff, okay? All right, so I had a little bit of um, coconut milk left in my 
measuring cups. So what I did was add like just a little amount of water to it to just pour on top. Cause I'm gonna let this cook just, you know, just let it cook um, some boil together and cook down before I add the rice and all the other stuff. Cause you don't want too much liquid in the, um, too much liquid for the rice. Cause you don't want the rice to come out all, unless you like mushy rice. My family and I really don't like that. So no mushy rice here. Okay, the coconut milk and the rice is getting along very well. Getting along very well. I'm gonna go ahead and I do put some seasoning in it as well. I know some people may not do that. That's a little black pepper adobe and my my um, complete seasoning. And I'm gonna let this cook in a little bit more again before I even add my rice and anything else. I'm gonna let the water um, go down, the liquid I should say now, go down a little more. Then I'm gonna add my rice, my pepper, my thyme, my scallion, add a little butter to it and, and a little oil. Um, just on the top and get it going Okay guys before you put in your green onion This is what you want to do to help bring out the flavor in your rice You want to take something it could be the edge of a knife like I'm doing your cooking knife your sharp knife Whatever and you just just do that before you drop it in the pot with the rice This is one of the peppers from my garden that I'm gonna put in the rice a scotch bonnet pepper for me I don't know the heat of this one yet. This is called the brain scotch bonnet. I always use like just a little tiny thing and I poke a little hole, just just a little one, not too much. You don't have to do that. You just put the whole pepper in there without poking a hole. I just like the flavor and everything else to come out in there. Now, if you break that open in the rice, please don't because you're just gonna have a pepper rice. That's it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this to the rice and peas. My rice is already rock washed and ready. I like to wash my rice to where the water is absolutely clear in it because get all that starch out of there out of there. Let me get that rice in there. No rice grain left behind, y'all. No rice grain left behind. And let's get that rice in there. We got the stuff set up for my fish, baby. Gee. It's not time to... <laughs> what? <laughs> so, I did leave some rice grain behind, but you know what? Sometimes that happens, unfortunately. Um... So that's that. Then we're gonna have the thyme, the scallion. Gonna add a little butter. I'm gonna stir that in so the butter can melt nice. Let me go get, I'm gonna put like just a tip of oil in here. Literally just a tip. Oops, wait, that was more than just a tip, but it's okay. We'll be, it's fine. It's just to help um, the rice a lot of times. It won't, um, I find that my rice, if I make a mistake when I put oil in it, it doesn't really um, stick, stick together because the oil helps, but it's fine. And last but not least, Haha, -ha, this beautiful scotch bonnet pepper that goes right on top. Like that, right in the middle there. And we're gonna cover it. And I'm gonna turn my stove down on low because I don't like to burn rice unless I want some bun bun. I don't mind burning it, but not today, y'all. Not on purpose. Okay, guys, the liquid is dried out of my rice. See, it's all dried out. I'm using a fork to go ahead and fluff it. And I'm gonna show you, if you have, don't know by now, I'll show you my hack, because I do think my rice has to be steamed some more. And I'll show you my, my little hack that I do to steam my rice. I want my pep, I'm doing this with the pepper because I want that flavor, I want that pepper flavor in there. Okay, so I'm squeezing the pepper 
whatever that little hole I had in there. And let me go ahead and put that little hack I'm showing you about. So I get the foil paper and I put it in there like this. My stove is still on super low, super, super low. Yeah, it's hot, so watch when you do this with your fingers. I'm just used to it by now, so I know how to kind of touch it. And then you put the cover on and you let it sit and steam some more. Okay, time to check my rice. Let's see here. Take that off. Oh, it's all nice. It's all nice. Look at that. Looking nice, man. I left Wheel of Fortune to come see this. <laughs> and the rice is ready. And I'm going to cover it up. And we're going to go ahead and cook the fish. Okay, we're going to turn this uh, gas stove on outside. And we're getting the oil in there so we can fry that fish. All right, and then we're going to heat the oil. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and season the fish, okay? I have the seasoning right here. All right, we're going to go ahead and do that. And remember I said I'm going to show you why I have the slits? Here we go. And I have slits on both sides. Joe's over there messing with our um, sprinkler system because he's moving it around, watering the yard. Live by live. Music. News. Metallica just announced their very first show of the year. Okay, I'm done seasoning. The fishes are seasoned. And we're going to go ahead and put them in the oil because it's actually up to temperature now. All right, let's go. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put the fishes in. All right. Then I'm gonna add the rest of it and let it fry to a crisp. Fry to a crisp. Yes, yeah, fry it up in there. Let's get going. Okay, I'm gonna get some of the fish oil out of the pot to make the sauce. So I'm just gonna skim a little lot at the top to saute the vegetables. The velvet underground google it <laughs> okay just a little bit more of the fish oil and there you go we're gonna go ahead and start the sauce now okay we're gonna go ahead and put the vegetables in to stop start the sauce okay i have it on low By the way, I do DJing for weirdos on the side, in case anybody's <laughs> interested. Private message me. So I'm going to go ahead and saute these vegetables to cook a little bit, and then I'm going to come back and add the rest of the ingredients, okay? Okay, now we're going to add the rest of the stuff. Okay? Yeah, the baby. ingredients, I should say. Yeah, baby. We have water. Water, baby. We have vinegar. Vinegar, baby. Brown sugar. You could use oh, other sugar if you want, but I like brown sugar. Brown sugar, baby. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know why I invite him to do these things with me. <laughs> and, and a little salt. That'd be me. And we're going to stir this in together. 
and we're gonna just let it simmer and all the flavors blend. Now you can always, when you try this, you can always just um, taste your sauce for enough salt or sweet or spice, however you want it. It's supposed to have like um, a vinegar base, but also has a sweet spicy to it. So it's like vinegary, sweet, spicy. It's, it's tart and spicy and sweet. For those of you from Lexington, North Carolina, it may be like a little like your barbecue sauce, only totally Jamaican. Really, Joe? Seriously. Totally Jamaican. <laughs> anyway, we're going to let this simmer together and blend all the flavors, and then it will be done. Turn it up. Okay, so the scotch bonnet from our tree is hot. But that's it simmering. <coughs> oh yeah, it's good, very good, good flavor. But it is hot. <laughs> Joe did a good job with this batch. Okay, guys, 